ordered the second meeting of the City of Gladstone Budget Committee on Tuesday, May 30th, 2023 at 5.35 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. Uh, City of Gladstone... <coughs> The City of Gladstone is abiding by guidelines set forth in House Bill 2560, which requires the governing body of the public body, to the extent reasonably possible, to make all meetings accessible remotely through technological means and provide opportunity for members of the general public to remotely submit oral and written testimony during meetings to the extent in-person oral and written testimony is allowed. Therefore, this meeting will be open to the public both in-person and virtually using the Zoom platform. Uh, let the record show that uh, most of the committee is in attendance. Uh, Councillor Reichel is attending via Zoom. Um, Councillor Cook is not present currently, and uh, Shane O'Brien is not present currently, uh, but we will keep posted on, on whether others uh, join the meeting in progress. We left off after examining the general fund budget. So if you will all turn to the public works tab, which begins page 63, that's where we will continue to examine the budget um, for the 2023-2025 millennium, by millennium. Uh, yes, biennial budget for that, for that period. And I call on Kathy Brucker to make the presentation of the public works budget. Oh, well, thank you, sir, but I'm going to turn it over to Jackie for just a moment. I, uh, did you want to uh, go over one item I on property can. taxes? Yep, okay, let's that. do that. Okay. okay. And then and then uh, Darren Canapool will be presenting the public works budget for us. No, this is just a... Um, there was a, um, a lot of questions that came up at the uh, our first meeting regarding our property taxes in Oregon. And with having a lot of new budget committee members and council members, I thought I'd give just a really quick rundown on our very convoluted property tax structure in the state of Oregon. Any of us who are taxpayers do recognize that. So what I wanted to share with you is, is um, the property tax structure dates where it started getting going sideways, dated back to measures five and 50 that were voted into law way back in 1990 and 1997, respectively. It's a, this is a brief outline on what the limitations it's placed on local government with the growth and collection of which is one of our major revenue sources, especially for the general fund. The passage of these two measures resulted in one, limiting the total amount that can be assessed on a property to $15 per thousand based only on operating taxes. Bond levies are considered an exception to that cap. Inst it instituted the permanent rate limit that was assigned to each city or local government based on the 1997 budget and has been frozen at that rate ever since. Gladstone at that time received a permanent rate of 4.8174, does not change. Again, bond and locum option levies are over and above the permanent rate, but they're short-term fixes or short-term solutions. And the local option levy is also subject to that $15 total tax per thousand rule. It also caused the implementation of the assessed value, reduced the property's real market value from 95, 96 down by 10%. And that became the basis for taxation instead of the real market value. Then growth was capped at 3% of the assessed value, no matter the changes in the real market value. There are exceptions for significant improvements made to the property or if completed after 1997, when it all went into effect, uh, then your assessed value and market value are going to be much uh, closer. This method of measurement resulted in large differences during times of high value growth and no ability to change the true assessed value of the property. Houses of equal market value could have widely disparate assessed values, one built in 95, one built in 98 if you had an increase in your market rates, the assessed values, there is still a wide uh, margin in those. 
Market value can be reassessed at time of sale or title transfer, but assessed value never changes purely due to a transfer of ownership. The county assessor calculates annually the real market value and assessed value, making adjustments as necessary to comply with these limits of keeping within the $15. Should the applicable taxes exceed those limits, then compression is applied to reduce the total tax bill back to $15 per thousand. Fortunately, within Gladstone, we don't run into compression, or at least we haven't in the last six years that I've seen. If real market value on property falls below the assessed value, such as the 2008 recession, annual taxes will decrease. So that of course means that our 3% guaranteed increase does not materialize. It can definitely fall below 3%. However, as soon as recovery starts, the rate will accelerate back to an adjusted assessed value as quickly as the market dictates, resulting in increases far higher than the permitted 3% sometimes, not only on our end, but as the property owner, what you may all of a sudden see a, a big jump in your property taxes that way. So there was significant interest in property tax reform in the state to address these disparities, but there's not much mention of it lately. It seems to have just fallen out of favor with the legislature. And then finally, uh, if you have any further questions about it, I was in poking around on the Clackamas County Assessment and Taxation website today, and they contain excellent information in there as far as further in-depth explanation as to how this all works, how you can even look at it in correlation to your own personal property and see the difference in your real market value versus assessed value, et cetera, and how they calculate out these tax rates. So are there any questions about that? I hope it was just, you know, a little bit of background information. This did occur so long ago now. We're not putting as detailed information into the budget on it because it would be redundant year after year after year until they make some changes that hopefully will be of value to include. And I'll just add one thing. We're working on the Gladstone city budget. So that permanent tax rate that applies to the city budget is uh, the portion of your property tax that goes to the city of Gladstone. Mm -hmm. But since we live in a county and a variety of other districts around us, including school districts, mm -hmm. college districts, and so on, your total property tax bill includes several other entities that are paid taxes. But what you've described here uh, relates to, well, the, the assessed value portion applies to all these various rates that are applied to your bill. Correct. Uh, but the portion of the budget that we're working on, it only relates to the city of Gladstone's permanent tax rate and the levy rates that we have adopted in the past. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So then the city of Gladstone, it, it never goes over $15 per thousand. And that's accounting all the things Marin was talking about, our, uh, that's, the Clackamas County. The that's you as the property owner. It is not to go over $15 per thousand unless there are bond levies or local option levies. And then it can top. go over the 15. Yes, with a bond levy, a local option levy must stay within the 15. Okay. Or you go into compression on that. Do we have currently uh, none? Uh, just the, the two levy. As far as for the city of Gladstone itself or Gladstone property owners, I couldn't answer you that one. There is the school, the very large school one. Hmm? I think 2027, unless they go out for another bond. Yes, yes, yes. It would definitely sunset though. So it's not that it's automatic that another one would be in place. That's up to the voters again. But if it does fall off, would we actually see it on that yellow thing we get from the county? It would, yes. it would be less. You would see an actual. Okay, I, I have because I've never seen that, so I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Not many of us have, right? Right. So, anyways, if there's any other questions I can answer on that, please let me know because it is a, it's a, it's a messy situation. We just rely heavily on property taxes for our general fund, though. So yes. Okay, uh, Public Works Director Darren Canaparoli, do you want to start with your enterprise funds? And while Darren's coming forward, I will note that Sierra Cook has joined us via Zoom, so she is also here. Okay, 
Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with, can you all hear me? Uh, we'll start with the roads and street fund. <clears throat> Some noteworthy items for this fund. Uh, we replaced over 400 traffic signs and 200 street name signs in the last biennium. Uh, completed the annual slurry seal and crack seal per our pavement management program, and also replaced nine ADA ramps around John Whitten Elementary. Uh, some budget highlights, annual slurry seal, crack seal, that will keep going. Uh, replacement of about approximately 150 traffic signs and street name signs. And then a pedestrian crossing at Webster Road and Quezon Road. Line item wise, everything is pretty much status quo. Some, some areas went up a little bit, some went down. Most of the ones that went up were the uh, inflator, 4% roughly uh, inflator on most of those. One of the not <clears throat> noteworthy items, if, if you look at the under capital outlay, the equipment replacement fund, if you noticed uh, at, in last year's biennium, that was at 622,000. And at this year, it's reduced down to 250,000. What we did there is we were getting a large amount of money in that pocket that we didn't really need to have there. And we have taken that money and moved it down into the system improvements and project line item. And then we're gonna hold tight for now with the dollar amount that is there. Um, if you look at uh, capital outlay on page 88, <clears throat> that will show the uh, projects that we'll be doing and anything that we'll be spending out of the, um, the equipment replacement fund. Uh, currently, we're going to be replacing a dump truck that'll be split amongst all enterprise funds. So not one fund will be spending or will be paying for it at, all at once. And then you can see the, pa <clears throat> the pavement management programs there, the Webster case on crossing is there. Um, and then the other funds that uh, currently aren't um, designed to be spent going forward. Any questions on streets? Um, remind me what you can use your SDCs for on, um, on page 64, I think is where I saw it. <clears throat> oh, down at the very bottom. <clears throat> Yeah. So that's on new construction, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And expansion. And expansion, yeah. And that would be the same in uh, parks, streets, storm, sandy, water. But what can you, what, so I'm saying, I'm thinking it's your fund. Right. What, what can your department use that on? Um, if we were <laughs> installing new infrastructure, we could use it on that. Oh, okay. Um, if we were going in... Um, Trying to think of another situation. Items identified in the master plans. Yeah, in the transportation safety plan, mm -hmm. uh, that would be in there. Um, and it lists all that stuff. I believe it lists all that in mm -hmm. the TSP. So, mm -hmm. so any kind of uh, infrastructure improvement or expansion related yes. to expansion, not maintenance. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. System development is to build capacity. Okay. So uh, you can allocate a portion of a cost towards a project for that. It's a formula base to do that. But typically system development charges have to be towards something new or enhancing, expanding something. Okay. Well, I got a question I, did, I didn't see in here. Um, I just see where it says sidewalk funding, 1% of the gas tax. And what, what about like when we put those ADA corners in like at the school who where's that <clears throat> that come that from? was done with a grant through uh the county oh so that was how that we put was all those in. Okay. right and then we'll be using a portion of that for the uh webster case on crossing of that money that was for the sidewalk correct ADA. okay i just didn't see it mentioned so i didn't know how, how those come about thank you and I, I would just say in streets, <coughs> when you see that under system improvement and projects when you're carrying about 1.88 million that sounds like a lot but it's really maybe gets you a couple blocks of a street so it's not really a lot of funding that's available to do projects and would that be like emergencies for a pipe or anything like that that comes out of that right there? that would also come okay. out of that correct okay thank you darren we'll move on to sewer sewer um some of the noteworthy items, um, we completed the inflow and infiltration study 
in accordance with our mutual agreement and order with DEQ. Uh, completed and designed, uh, well, we're almost completed and design of projects one and two in the inflow and infiltration report. Um, constructed the West Clackamas sewer project. Created maintenance standards for all sewer work. Uh, highlights in this year's budget is to complete the inflow and infiltration projects one and two. Um, adopt an agreement with Oak Lodge Water Services and begin capital improvement projects in the Oak Lodge Services area. Again, with, with the uh, line items, everything is, is pretty much status quo. There's some ups, there's some downs, there's nothing that's a big jump on any of those. Again, if you look at the under capital <coughs> outlay, um, the equipment reserve, um, stays the same in this budget. We didn't add anything to that. We kept that at a static number for right now. We'll look at that in the future. If that can be reduced, we would then take that down and put that into the system and improvements uh, line item. And then again, if you turn to page 88, it lists the, uh, the projects that are gonna be in there. Obviously we have, um, the portion of the dump truck that I'd mentioned earlier with the streets. Um, we, we've got a F550 service truck that we'll be replacing in the next two years. You have the um, I and I reduction. And if you notice there, it's split three ways. So you have sewer, that would be coming out of the capital side. You have the ARPA grant, that would be coming out of that. And then a West reimbursement. So with the West reimbursement, we did an IGA with West where, where they will pay 33% of any project that uh, removes I and I from the system. So that would be their portion of that. And then <clears throat> Oak Lodge uh, pipe repairs, that's, um, that will be slated. That'll be going over until 2027. So in the next buying name, you'll also see those there. It's, um, well, I guess it'd be four, three years total that we'll be doing those projects there. And then we have an 80 second drive pump station replacement or repairs. <clears throat> That's um, over off of, what is that over there? Ever Edgewater. Okay, There's sorry. a pump, pump station over there. Uh, we have an IGA with the county to do the replacement of most of that pump station. Um, and that's what you'll see. That's what that uh, stands for there. And then any leftover uh, system improvement projects. I just had a question. So when you're, when you're looking like, uh, I don't know if you can figure it out now or not, but when you, you're saying the dump truck, you're going to mm -hmm. buy and the yes. 550 service truck. Mm -hmm. Do you not figure in this, do you get a trade in on it? Do you sell the ones we had? So that's going to be a surplus after we sell them. And does that not get figured in or does it, where does it just go? Just when you get the money. It goes to revenue state surplus. Re, uh, we refer to it as surplus property revenue. So for public works or for the. Whole yes, city. it would come into the fund that sells it. Okay. Yes. And just to add one thing, the city council members have the advantage of having recently had some uh, work sessions that talked about the I and I project and the IGAs connected with that. I and I is inflow and infiltration. It's when storm water and sewer water mix because of the way the pipes are designed or 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 problems with the pipes. Stages one and two of dealing with that problem look at the identified areas that we can do sort of quick repairs on, relatively quick. Uh, we identify them, we have engineering design the fixes, and then we will do them. The later stages of that process have to do with fixing and repairing the, the pipes underneath the streets. Uh, and that's a, a future project part of the same process. Um, so, uh, but when we talk about I and I, uh, you'll see it both in the sewer budget and the stormwater budget. And that's what it's referring to. And that also, um, with those two projects, we'll complete our MAO with DEQ by doing those two projects. We'll no longer be under that order with DEQ. Any other questions? I have one. The sewer fund is money coming in from our, our, our water bills. Am I correct? Or this is 
general fund going into sewer? No, this is coming in. It's billed out on the utility billing, and this is the sewer portion. So none of this is part of our our um, our general fund going into sewer. Not at all. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, thank you, Darren. Ready for water? Okay, <clears throat> water, some no noteworthy items from the last biennium. Uh, we com completed the uh, reservoir cleaning and inspection that has to be done every five years. That was completed. And then we also created uh, maintenance standards for our water system uh, moving forward. Uh, we'll be working on those. And part of that is under your highlights, you see unidirectional flushing um, that's a program we'll be starting um, in this biennium. Uh, basically, you go in and you scour the insides of the pipes by flushing the system certain ways, and um, that will then clean all of the pipes, and it'll be much better water at the end of that, realistically. You won't have a lot of the, the um, deposits and stuff like that that are in the, in the pipes currently. Um, and then the other big one is uh, start design and construction of the Sherwood Forest neighborhood AC pipe replacement. That neighborhood, um, all of the um, water infrastructure is out of the streets. None of it is in the middle of the street. So if we ever have any water main breaks or anything like that, it's in somebody's property or in somebody's driveway or something like that. Um, it's old asbestos line pipe that needs to be moved to the street. That's what that project is. Yeah. It's a $3 million project today. $3 million? Today. Yeah, that's, that's what that's we're what's estimating. That's what's in the budget. Come in. Yeah. Wow. So uh, line item wise, um, a couple notes there. If you notice under uh, contract and professional services, uh, year one of the budget is at 200000 and the next year it's down at 75000 That's where that unid unidirectional flushing is, is in that line item right there. Um. The other noteworthy, again, with the equipment reserves, um, we held tight with what we had currently in that. We are not adding any more to that at this time. And then if you turn to page 88 again, that's where you'll find the programs in there. You can see, again, the 10-yard dump truck, uh, the Sherwood uh, Forest Pipe Project, and then SCADA system. Uh, our current SCADA system, if that's what you can call it, is very, very outdated, and it is in dire need of being replaced. What does that stand for? Oh, what is SCADA? Or what is it? It's telemetry, basically, that'll tell us what the system's doing at any point, any time, right. when pumps are running, when they're not running, all of that. We can, we'll be able to control it from a computer. Currently, we, for us to do anything, we need to go up to the reservoir and turn on pumps, turn on pumps, switch pumps. You don't wanna run the same pump all the time. So you're bouncing back and forth on pumps. Currently, we have to go up to the reservoirs and, and do that manually. Um, with this system, we'll just be able to go in and on a computer and just switch pumps. We'll get all the telemetry, everything back, basically at your fingertips that we currently do not have. So it's a monitoring system. Pretty much, yeah. And then um, the rest of that is the system improvements, uh, leftovers that are uh, in the uh, line item there. Any questions on water? I have a couple. Okay, uh, the meter reading contract, how did that go down? Um, are we on some different types of reads now? Are we electronic at all or? No, the, the, <clears throat> it's, it's a difference of a thousand. Yeah. And, what we had in there last year versus what we spent was significantly different. Oh, okay. And so I dropped it down because of that. I didn't want to go too much because obviously with price increases and things like that. So. Right. That's, I was looking for four or 5% across the board and why didn't that show up? But I, okay, I get that. And then the other one I was looking at was bank charges. Our bank charges are doubling. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, oh, we have more and more. That's a lot of money. We have more and more people paying online. 
And as, as we get payments in on credit cards, we pay the bank charges for that. It's considered part of doing, you know, cost of business. No, I know. Yeah. Yes. I, I, yes wow. but we're just increasing our online presence. So do we pass that on or we, no. we, so we absorb it. it? We absorb it. We absorb it just as in that historically has been in place since we went to the Tyler system that allowed the online payments okay. such as this, but yes, bank, you know, credit card charges are high. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for clarification, we don't pass it on directly to the consumer who uses the card as an additional no, fee, we don't. but by including in our budget, we are absorbing that cost and it is paid for out of the total amount of, uh, uh, fees and rates that we charge right. the customers. And we we spread that out between water, sewer, and storm, all three of them. Is, is, if more people are using their credit cards, is there any savings somewhere else in the budget of people not having to process the paper? Absolutely. Okay. You know, it's, it saves tremendous hours and staff time. Okay. Yes, it's much faster as far as just the whole processing. We get our money faster. Uh, you know, there's not a float out there with checks coming back and forth, et cetera. Okay. Thank you. Good. One more. Stormwater. Stormwater. Uh, noteworthy items. Uh, again, created maintenance standards for all, all stormwater features or functions. Uh, completed the Barclay Stormline project um, and created a monthly street sweeping schedule. Um, that didn't current or that didn't exist before that. And so now every month, the first week of the month, first week and a half of the month, we are sweet, uh, sweeping the streets. So um, budget highlights again, we clean our catch basins every year. There's approximately 1,119 catch basins and then a replacement of a storm line on Evergreen Lane. I have to replace that storm line. I remember those two you did not too long ago. Um, line item wise, again, not a lot of changes, pretty much uh, standard quo. Um, one that I will mention is the uh, fleet maintenance and repairs. Uh, that line item went up significantly. Um, we have a sweeper that costs a lot to get repaired. Um, I'm not sure how that was distributed in the prior budget, but uh, it will become strictly out of storm since that is a storm function. Um, other than that, the vehicle uh, replacement reserves, that one we are continue, continuing to add to. Um, and the reason is the um, sweeper cost. Eventually we're gonna have to have a repair, replace the sweeper and that's a pretty costly item. So I wanna make sure that we have plenty of money there when it does come time to replace that. Um, again, if you take a look at page 88, You'll see there the 10 yard dump truck that we talked about. You'll see the portion of the um, INI project there. And then you'll see the uh, Evergreen Stormline replacement project in that line item as well. Any questions on storm? I think the important takeaway is we often get people that say, where's the rate increases going for our water, sewer, and as you can see, within the next two years, if you subtract those to be determined projects, there's about an $18 million investment going into our infrastructure. And that's, that's what we are going to message to the, uh, to the public the next two years is because now you can actually see the projects that this money is being contributed towards in capital. So the, <clears throat> it appears to me that there is a $1.5 million increase between 2021 and 2023 and 2025, 2020, 21 to 23 and 23 to 25. That is all coming in from the rate payers. It's all, uh, as you can see what the revenues are above, we received the storm revenue that comes in on the utility bills for stormwater fees. Um, there's a small amount for SDCs. We are getting a contribution from ARPA towards the um, INI project. And then there is right of way revenue that comes in from the road and street fund. And we're losing one of those, am I correct? 
Losing one of what? The right of way fees. I thought we were losing one of those was um, down. One of one of the uh, contributions that we were receiving from Oak Lodge. Okay. Yes. No, I take that back. I'm no. sorry. It was uh, NCCWC. Okay. So on page 88, a lot of those. But to be determined, what is there a, a method or something you figure out to be determined? Do you have to get more information? Or I mean, in other places, you just estimate, like we were talking about earlier, and then these are have to be determined. So what's the difference with estimating from last year waiting to determine i just these are actual dollars i mean estimated dollars within the budget from you know um uh, available funding but we want to definitely identify it because if it is not expended this year if there is not a project that the council approves that it will be spent on we want to be sure we have it identified so we roll it into the following year okay and uh, these are the projects that we can realistically get done in two years. So then we're starting a six year capital plan. So these to be determined will be then forecasted out. Okay. So the so funds will change. get spent. Change. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And this is where we come back and refer to our master plan to also. Oh, okay. right. So these dollars will be financing the master plan going forward. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So that's why you'll sometimes see a different amount in the fiscal year budget because a, a particularly a, one particular project is, you know, we, we have planned to do it or forecast to do it in a particular fiscal year. And we balance those out knowing how much time, how much, you know, uh, resources we have to do them in a given year. And so a, a long term six year capital improvement plan helps us plan ahead. So we're not trying to do everything at once. Or we're not trying to go a year and not do anything, but we're spacing them out accordingly so that things get done on a regular basis. And improvements that require a previous project to be done, that previous project gets completed before you do the next phase of a similar type project. Right. And it's similar to pay as you go, which that's why we don't have a bond. We don't go ask for $25 million for the taxpayers to pay back towards us. We budget what we can realistically get finished in the two years. Um, and the last six years when we were here, we spent a lot of time doing master plans because we didn't have them. And we did rate increases for five years. And now we're at a point where the money is starting to come in and we can get the projects done. And maintain our rate increases basically at just an inflationary cost of living basis. Um, one of the noteworthy items was creating a monthly street sweeping schedule. How was that done before a schedule was developed? Um, well, that was before I was here, so I don't really know, but it sounds like it was mostly they'd go out. It, most of it was in the winter time. They didn't do a lot in the summer, um, but there's still debris out there. And the whole idea is, is to keep the debris out of the catch basins. Yes, we do clean the catch basins, but the less debris in there, the faster you can clean them. So, um, we we clean monthly summer months winter months unless there's snow on the ground obviously but mm -hmm. um that's the whole idea of it is to get as much of that debris off the road before it gets into the catch basins which then makes cleaning those 1119 catch basins <coughs> that much quicker preventative maintenance. correct mm -hmm. exactly yeah it's really reduced our flooding in gladstone considerably Okay, those are our enterprise funds. Thank you, Darren. Yep, thank you. You ready, Chief? <laughs> Let's turn to page 77. Okay, we're here to talk about the uh, the levy, the police uh, communications uh, fund levy. Um, 77 is the page. And as you can see, the levy uh, funds the code enforcement officer's position, school resource officer, canine program, and the executive assistant to the chief and other equipment needs. Um, just some not uh, noteworthy items that I'll, I'll brag a little bit about because 
uh, the canine program, that canine team itself has worked extremely hard over the last four years. When I first got here, um, they were struggling, they were new, and now they've built a reputation among, uh, among the county and maybe the tri-county area of uh, being uh, extremely successful and, and a, a desired team to come out and search for either items or people when needed. Uh, but what I also wanted to impress is that the nuke will not only track and find, but he's playful. He's engaging with the community. So he's not that, he's not that complete vicious dog all the time, although he can be when need be when, you know, as the time calls, but he's also very good with children. And that's what we want. We wanted, we wanted a team that engages with the community. And this is what, this is what the canine does. And he's very popular um, as you, as you go along with that, you'll see in, in, in some of the noteworthy highlights too, is the truck. It's a different platform than normal. Uh, than what many of you have seen around the metro area, but it's very effective for the equipment, for an Anuk itself, the venting system, whether it's heat or air conditioning. And the dog is, uh, it rolls around pretty nice. It's pretty comfortable. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, it's extremely functional and, and for what the canine officer needs to do and, and the dog itself. Uh, below, you'll just see some of the material, the shields that are required for, for a lot of our work. Uh, that we train on and stuff. These are very expensive items, but they last a while. So the ballistic shields and and the SRO program, as you can see on the on the next page, um, the SRO program is critical. Uh, uh, we when I came here, we brought the philosophy that was already here, but uh, you know, kids are the future here. Um, our youth are the future, and we want to we want to invest in our kids, and that's what the school resource officer program is designed to do. You'll hear a lot about pipelines and other things that that go on. The whole goal is not to put kids in a pipeline. That's the goal of the SRO program. The goal is to prevent them from getting in the system and teach them and grow them, and through other ways than the system itself. And we've been we've been really successful at that, which is which is a reason we've engaged with the. Uh, with the Clackamas County Juvenile Department on different areas uh, to help them uh, find diversionary programs and such for, for our youth. And it's been successful. We've been able to engage in a lot of different ways with our youth and build those relationships. And we want to continue to do so. Um, and we, we know the stigma out there, but I don't think that's Gladstone at all. And um, we have a good relationship with our schools and we intend to maintain those relationships. And finally, the code enforcement program, um, uh, you know, that's that's an operational priority for the for the uh, for the police department. It was made clear to me in 2019 when I was hired that it was a priority. I was told that multiple times. And so we made it a priority. Um, and, and we continue to develop that program with hiring of our new uh, Sammy Unda, our new code enforcement officer. We've been able to revamp what we're doing, changing the hours, the schedule, making it more productive and we've gotten more done I think with our officers and with Sammy in the last six months and I think we've ever done um, and being very successful in, in changing things and correcting things so uh, Sammy's a welcome addition to this and uh, we're just going to continue moving forward but if I can answer any questions about the budget just want to kind of give you a flavor of what that, that that levy is about and how important it is to us um, I'd be happy to answer any questions well, so just to get his favorite, correct me if I'm wrong, but so we're already paying this. We're paying this right now. All we're all we're going to vote on is to keep paying it or not. Renewal. No, no increase. Right no now. increase. Just a Perfect. renewal. There you go. So we're already doing it. So it's just yes. say yes, we're going to keep doing it, and we can get all that. What hopefully, we got now. hopefully that's the case. Yes. <laughs> and what's important for the budget committee to understand that you know once you adopt this budget, if for some reason it does not pass we will lose these services in 2024. Yes. And that's really what we wanted to make sure that everybody understood. This budget is assuming that we're going to renew the police and fire levies. George. Uh, you're okay. on. Sorry. His light was green, so it totally threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I got a red. Am I on? Um, so on the school resource officer program, you talk about the success of it. Like what do, are there like metrics you all track, like and compare year to year? I'm just curious, like on the diversion. And you know, yes. Yeah, so there's metrics that are kept like on the diversionary program, but that's through the juvenile department, and they'll send us uh records of that. So we may receive um 
uh, the diversionary program may receive one or two referrals a month, maybe. Um, and with that, they'll work with them through the juvenile department, get them in the community here in Gladstone as far as community services provided and with some mentorship with other adults. So okay, thank you. you bet. So I just like to add for our budget committee that um, as you can tell, working on this budget, we don't have any jurisdiction over this, the, the school district and their funds whatsoever, none. But the two strongest things we have, the city has going between the city and the school district, one is our resource officer, the other being um, the uh, classes that you can sign up for. But we had a meeting with the school board here a couple of months ago, and it was overwhelming how supportive they are with that uh, that part of their job of the school resource officer coming over to the schools and meeting the kids and knowing the kids and being a constant presence and not a scary presence. And it's, it's, it's something that's just vital, I believe, in our community. Um, it's a help, not a hindrance, and it needs to stay. So I can't ask enough, anybody watching, anybody listening, you know, our, this, it's really important that this levy passes and that we can keep that communication with our kids open and honest. So thank you for doing that. Welcome. I have a question. Sure. Um, is there any plan to make um, police activity more easily searchable? I, I get a lot of questions about what, you know, oh, this happened on that particular corner, what was going on? You know, is there any plans for that that's very difficult. You're talking about an active system where, mm -hmm. and I think we have something online right now, but I don't know how really effective it is okay. that you can sign up for. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm, okay. I'm not an <laughs> IT guy. I don't have that technology <laughs> background to support, but I know, I know it exists, but the ones I know of aren't really immediate interaction. Okay. Thank you. And what we lack in a, in a live, uh, you know, real time system, uh, if there are real significant events that take place, uh, our city administrator is very good about getting the communication from the police department or other regional law enforcement agencies and communicating it back to the council so that, you know, if things start to circulate on social media mm -hmm. and somebody's getting the wrong idea about what happened, uh, you know, everybody's on top of the real facts and can usually try to straighten things out and make sure that we clarify what's what really happened or didn't happen. And and typically, if it's a larger incident, we'll push it out on social media, sometimes not as timely as people may think, because we're all pretty much out there and we don't have we can't get to it. Um, but we'll eventually get it out there or someone will ask that we post some things for awareness, which is helpful for us, too, because, frankly, it may just slip our mind we may be just so tied up that we don't think about it and it's needed. So that help is also welcome. So bottom line, don't be afraid to put a yes for the police and fire levy sign in your yard. Well, I can't make a comment on that, but you guys feel free. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Yep. Want you fire? Sure. Okay. Okay. So going on to the next one, the on page 81, the fire and emergency services levy fund, the revenues and expenditures here. This, as with the police levy, levy, excuse me, was originally approved by the voters in November 98 and has been renewed every five years at the same rate of 31 cents per thousand. Currently, it's funding 18% of the total fire department budget and is focused towards paying a share of the Clackamas District 1 contract. If you note on page 81 there, you'll see the how we used to have a quite a breakdown as far as line items there in the budget where when the um, uh, fire department was, excuse me, was with the city. However, now you see it's all focused into contractual and professional. And that of course is going to Clackamas Fire District One. Any questions about that? Okay. Going to the next page then on the municipal court fund, 
this is truly an agency fund and it's something we have to do because local budget law demands it. So basically we have to estimate how many revenues we're gonna be getting in on fines and fees and then what the disbursement out on those fines and fees are out to the other agencies. So this is as a, it's really a swag on this one many, in many ways, shapes and forms. But basically, of course, it's, it's based on the percentage of fees that are normally uh, um, parceled out to the various agencies. The next uh, page shows our closed fund here, which is the Civic Building Capital Fund. In order to keep our budget in balance, as long as there are funds that had dollars in the period of time that we're displaying, we continue to show those funds. So that, as we know, is completed and closed. And that takes care of uh, the rest of the other funds. It's decreased some because it can drop off. Uh, going into the next session, section of the capital outlay information on page 87. Kathy, can I just interrupt one thing? Of course. Uh, on the municipal court fund then, this is not the costs the city incurs in having a judge and having a court. No. This no. is just in, in and out of the fees that are paid. An agency fund for that. The, the municipal court department of course is under the general fund. yes we reviewed that and that we've day. already seen that yes. okay just wanted yes. that clarified Thank absolutely you. it's a good question because yes. oftentimes even like councillor alexander you it shows a lot of money coming in well where is it going and that's that's what this fund is for is to show you that we're the collection mechanism, but it goes to the state, it goes to the county for those yes. funds. So not all the fines that are assessed in this, the courtroom that appears, that happens in this room, stay in Gladstone. No. That's, That's correct. <laughs> right. Very, uh, you know, as only a certain amount. And as you can see on there, we estimated that the city of Gladstone fines and fees, we will bring in in the biennium 710,000. And then we will transfer that money to the general fund under fines and forfeitures of that 710,000. The rest of these are out to either the county and or state. Thank you. Yes. So uh, again, back to the capital outlay information, as we have mentioned several times already, this is start, it's a new section we're adding this year to try and give the reader a convenient method of identifying all the capital improvements, projects, vehicles, and equipment for the biennium and the departments or funds that um, are going to be financing those. It ties back to each of the departments and funds and will be part of the capital improvement plan that will span from FY 2024 through 2029. The CIPs are normally uh, presented and adopted separately from the biennium budget at a little later time. So that Darren and I will be working on that fast and furiously here after we get done with this. And, and a helpful column in this particular budget is that funding column, which identifies whether it's general fund or uh, grants, other sources, or the various enterprise funds, roads and streets, sewers, water, and so on. Exactly. Uh, so it, what, once you know what fund it's, it's from, you can go back in the budget and find uh, the specific mention of it in that particular fund. Yes. Okay. And then moving on to additional information, this is a variety of information that is included here. Of note in this section are the operating transfers that go uh, transfers in and out between the funds. You may have noticed those within the individual uh, fund um, uh, information. And then, uh, so that is basically what it is, is where we do our administration department recovery, the information technology department recovery, recovery our row revenue distribution from roads out to the other funds, and then um, public works debt service, how we are financing the payback on the public works debt service there. So this is just uh, the guideline to keep those money straight. Question. Uh -huh. What's what's uh, what, what is the debt service uh, under the Urban Renewal Agency? That is, I was just going into debt oh. service. We'll cover that at that time. Okay. 
Thank you. You're sitting in it, though. I'll tell you yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a prime example right here. Uh, the next page shows a summary of FTEs for the period of time that we're covering here within the biennial budget document with an explanation on where the FTE counts are coming from that they apply to the first year of the biennium. If there is a change, if there is an increase in the second year, that shows up on the individual pages. It would not show up here. And then a reconciliation so that you can see how we go from the last biennium to this biennium. So there's an understanding. I had a question about the library FTEs. Uh -huh. It's zero. Does that mean we have zero librarians? Or? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Um, the Clackamas County took over the library. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to go for the mic drop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait. Yes. We have that several librarians right. through Clackamas yes. County. Right. Yes. Why is the finance director? Their position down, to down from what now? Oh, I'm sorry. It was, uh, let me find that one here. It was originally in at a point or 1.0 FTE, full time FTE. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have determined that uh, because of the amount of work here, that likely we could probably uh, entice somebody to come in at a 0.80, 30 hours a week, basically 32 hours a week to where they have, uh, you know, a little less or a little more time. <laughs> yes. So in a general administration, is that, would that be anybody on that side of the wall? I mean, because I think it's uh, more than five, right? No, well, because municipal court is listed out on its own. Yes. Municipal court is on its own. Oh. Our utility billing clerk who actually works oh, okay. so is considered that. within finance. She has allocated out between the uh, utility funds. Uh, IT information technology is separate. Um, but we are a very yes. lean organization. Yes. We keep getting back to that term mm -hmm. because we are very lean. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into Kathy. the... Yeah, sorry. Um, with the reduction of the finance director to 0 0.80, was it still a benefited position at 30, 32 yes. hours? Yes, Thank you. fully benefited, prorated. Yeah, based Thank you. on the hours worked. Yes. Uh, then the next few pages go into uh, rep uh, show you the salary schedules that we have currently for the bienniums, um, non represented. Uh, ask me and then the um, GPA. So those are shown there as far as the calculation of them. They are 5% step increases between grades and um, the increase between the steps themselves will depend on whatever the current contract is for the each one of these, uh, either the non-rep or ask me or GPA. That's where changes are there. I just did want to point out too, if I could just quickly, uh, where you see the vacant, those are not vacant positions. Those are steps that are placed in there to achieve parity across the organization. I, when I was just on the human resource manager, it says public work supervisor and underneath city recorder, human resources manager, unfilled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, how, we have a human resources. We contract for That's services right now for that position. Yes. So it doesn't get shown the money that goes out for that? or It's, show, it's shown under contractual and professional oh, gotcha. services okay. under materials and services. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then going into page 97 is debt service, and it has a debt summary of what the city has outstanding at this time. We have a water full faith and credit note. Um, what oh, I wanted to preface that, that all of our debt is full faith and credit. There is no bond associated with any of this. So it's basically money we've been able to borrow based on the financial stability of the city and available funds to be able to repay it. So once it goes away, it's done. Just as you know, what you can see how we are getting very close to the expiration on um, 
uh, payment on the um, for the Civic Center as far as we were able to take quite short financing notes on that. One matures in 2029. And then the uh, debts, uh, excuse me, the public works facility will mature in 2039. And our water full faith and credit note was a refinance that matures uh, 2025. So the um, uh, information on here, as far as showing what the debt amount is, what the interest rates are, our ending balances as of this biennium, and then what the total debt service is by fund. Now you were asking about the URA debt and the Urban Renewal Agency borrowed, um, that will be in the Urban Renewal budget. We have to have something to show there. So the information on that is also is listed there, but the Urban Renewal um, Agency borrowed money to um, build this, facility here as we're allowed to within the urban renewal guidelines. And then it is paying back also to the general fund for the portion that the city uh, purchased or the city financed. So there is a split within that as far as um, the city hall did a total of three, or excuse me, the general fund did a total of $3 million and then the urban renewal agency did a share also, which you, again, as I say, you will see in the Urban Renewal Agency. Okay. Where's the school? The school? We don't do debt for the school at all. Oh, there is a school levy that's part of the property tax bill for people yeah. who pay property taxes. It's one of the line items on that, but it's not in no. the city budget. It's it's a separate taxing district that-, that Gladstone School District. But. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. They have been very good. You can see we're not going out for anything right now. <laughs> um, don't buy a car. Yeah, no, no. So then, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, this next section on additional information where it goes into business and employment populations and households, this is some information we wanted to add to the budget, just as an informational item and background on the city of Gladstone. This is furnished to us by the, we do have the source, it's sourced um, from the state of Oregon and uh, uh, from Jackie's request, um, they put this together for us, so it just has some up-to-date information on, on uh, what Gladstone is up to these days. And it goes into more housekeeping type things as far as our financial policies, uh, which the council, of course, has adopted. And then the glossary at the end, in case there is any question about some of the many acronyms that we refer to in throughout the budget. So that takes us through all of the city budget. <coughs> and any further discussion? We are ready to. We have some yes. scripted motions yes. when ready that mm -hmm. have to be read into the record. And we have typed those up for whoever wants to do that when you get to that point, Chair Milch. And I have those motions. Do we want to go ahead and look at the urban renewal budget now and then do all the motions at the same time? Or would it be better to go ahead and do the, the, uh, the ones for the city first? Yeah, I think so. It okay. would be. Largely because we have to reconvene. We have to adjourn and reconvene to discuss the all right. urban renewal agency. Um, let me ask Haley, do we have anyone who has requested to do any public comment on the budget tonight? No. Okay, very good. I wanted to give that opportunity in case there was anything that came up tonight that there were questions from the general public. All right. Um, so uh, I, I suppose I could make these motions myself. Would anyone object if I did that um, since I have them here and then someone else can second them. And I will begin with, uh, is it the, should I start with the budget approval motion? Yes. Okay. I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1, 2023 
and ending June 30, 2025, in the amount of $71,374,314. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, it's been moved by uh, Budget Committee Chair Milch and seconded by Budget Committee Member Huckabee. Uh, any discussion? Uh, and we will, Haley, can you do a roll call vote on this one? Yes, I can. Uh, Councilor Huckabee? Yes. Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ru Sorry. Ru Ron Ruggiero, Ruggiero votes Ruggiero. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? Yes. yes. Nina Harrington? Very yes. All right, the, the vote, uh, the motion passes unanimously. So we are recommending the budget. Uh, well, no, let's see, that, that may come later. Yeah, the recommendation comes a little later, I think. Uh, <laughs> all right, we also now, uh, part of this process is to approve uh, the tax levy. I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve property taxes for the 2023-2024 fiscal year at the rate of $4.8174 per thousand of assessed value for the permanent tax levy rate and in the amount of 68 cents per thousand for the police levy and 31 cents per thousand for the fire levy local option tax rates. I'll second. All right, it has been moved by Budget Committee Chair Milch and Budget Committee Member uh, Councilor Alexander um, is there any discussion? Can you read those numbers? Okay. Uh, the permanent tax rate is dollar sign 4.8174 per thousand. Mm -hmm. The police levy rate unchanged 0.68 dollars or 68 cents. Okay. And the fire levy rate 0.31 dollars or 31 cents per thousand. All right, uh, Haley, again, call the roll, please. Councilor Huckabee? Yes. Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Yes. Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? Yes. Nina Harrington? Yes. All right, the tax, the first tax levy motion passes as well. Um, if I may interject, the each fiscal year has to be. Uh, each, it's, the separate. fiscal year is the thing it's yes. changed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking, is it that's the same period? It is. <laughs> ah. Now we have the same motion for the 24 25 fiscal year, just so if you're listening carefully to the difference. I move that the Budget Committee of the City of Gladstone approve property taxes for the 2024-2025 fiscal year at the rate of $4.81.74 per thousand of assessed value for the permanent tax levy rate and in the amount of 68 cents per thousand for the police levy and 31 cents per thousand for the fire levy local option tax rates. I'll second. I'll second. All right, this is moved by uh, Budget Chair Milch, seconded by, in tandem, by uh, uh, committee members, uh, Councilors Roberts and Huckabee. Any discussion? All right, if you go away with from anything of being on Budget Committee, it's that the city cannot raise its tax rate. It's been the same since 1997. Uh, so, all right. Councilor Huckabee? Yes. Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Aye. Joshua Smith? Yes. 
Gabriella Blog. Yes. Nina Harrington. Yes. And the motion passes unanimously as well. Now we talked about shared revenues. Is that the next motion? Yes, it is. On the state shared revenues, we do have to have two public hearings and it must be held prior to adoption of the budget and then along with the adoption of the final budget by the city council. These are estimated by the state. They're based on population formulas and they're generated by alcohol, cigarette and marijuana taxes, commonly referred to as the SIN taxes. We will re receive an estimate of $437,750 in FY23-24 and $465,529 in FY24-25. And these funds are utilized across the general fund. Roads and streets will receive the gas taxes, again estimated by the state in the amount of $967,028 in FY23-24 and nine, uh, excuse me, $977,738 in FY24-25. These funds are dedicated for use within the roads and streets for maintenance and improvements of the transportation system within Gladstone. And a motion to approve the state shared revenues will need to be passed by the budget committee to move it to the second public hearing. And we have to formally file these resolutions and these movements with the state in order to ensure we receive the funds. So the individual fiscal year amounts that you gave appear in the budget yes. that we have approved yes. and uh, or that we have recommended for approval. Uh, and the total amounts of those over the total biennium are the figures that I will be reading in this motion. I move that the Budget Committee of the City of Gladstone approve the use of state shared revenues estimated in the amount of $903,279 for the general fund general purposes and $1,944,766 for the road and street fund maintenance and improvements for the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2025. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, it's been moved by Budget Chair Milch, seconded by uh, Budget Committee Member Councilor Alexander. Any discussion? Okay, call the roll, please. Councilor Huckabee? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Yes. Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? Yes. Nina Harrington? Yes. And that motion passes unanimously as well. Thank you, Haley, for calling the roll for us. Um, and so we uh, we will have a second public hearing. Will will the city council be the one to conduct that hearing then at a future meeting? Yes. Okay. At the time of the adoption of the budget. All right. So I believe we have done the motions required for the uh, for the city's budget, and we now adjourn the city budget committee meeting and readjourn as an urban renewal agency buddy budget committee. And we will turn to section, to page, uh, well, there's a cover page first. And, oh, there's a whole section with new numbers at the back. So turn to the URA tab in your, in your binder. Okay. To the Honorable Mayor, members of the Gladstone City Council, citizen members of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency Budget Committee, citizens of the City of Gladstone. The purpose of GURA is to administer the statutory tax increment revenues for funding the goals and objectives of the Gladstone Urban Renewal District Plan through designated projects within the district. I am pleased to present the 2023-2025 proposed biennial budget for the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency. The Gladstone City Council adopted a goal to create a robust economic ecosystem that supports, maintains, and grows all businesses and to revitalize Gladstone's downtown to be a vibrant and inviting place. 
To that end, the GURA budget reflects an allocation of $100,000 towards economic development that will include analyzing a potential future amendment to the existing urban renewal plan to add projects, expand the boundary, increase maximum indebtedness, and complete other plan updates. For historical purposes, in June 2018, GURA authorized indebtedness for capital projects for the district and approved the 23rd Amendment updating the project descriptions under resolution number UR65. These authorizations allowed the city to fund the construction of a new city hall and police station. The new Civic Center was completed within budget, on time, and ready for occupancy in April 2020. All related debt service is provided out of the GURA revenues through 2029. In fiscal year 2022-23, GURA budgeted to demolish the previous City Hall building as an extension of the Gladstone Civic Center project, and this was completed. Urban renewal creates excellent places, revitalizes downtown cores, and spurs economic development through public investments that stimulate private growth. When done correctly, the results are new housing choices, shopping and dining destinations, and business expansion opportunities that will contribute significantly to the quality of life for the citizens of Gladstone. Respectfully submitted, uh, Jackie Vett, City Administrator. Okay, so dealing with the Urban Renewal Agency on page three, it starts and it gives you just some background information about the district and then the limitations on urban renewal. We do have a maximum indebtedness balance of 2233238 that will cover known costs such as insurance audit and other professional services. So we have sufficient revenues through our tax base to be able to cover all of these types of costs. And then sufficient funds are available for the debt service also too, and transfers to the city's general fund for the full faith and credit issue um, until the retirement of that issue. As you can see, and the next page on page four, it does list out what our maximum indebtedness is and what uh, our total expenditures have been. And as you can see, the largest there is the capital outlay at 16,406. The highlights, as far as budget highlights, uh, revenues have remained coming in at the um, amounts necessary. We're good there. Requirements have separated into the items under m and materials and services and debt service. And as Jackie mentioned, funds have been budgeted for the, uh, were budgeted for the demolition of the city hall. And now we have funds uh, budgeted in this upcoming year as a contribution over to the general fund for an economic development contribution to facilitate business growth over there within the city. Um, the as far as other information here, uh, it is pretty self-explanatory. You can see where our fund balance has reduced drastically because of the completion of the Civic Center and the ongoing uh, payment of debt service from there. And then the next page seven does show our debt summary here. You'll see, as we said, we had borrowed 3 million from the general fund towards this. And then we borrowed 3.8 million under the urban renewal agency note to fund the balance of it. The note does mature in 2026. So we'll be uh, paid off at that time in just a couple more years here. And uh, then we will just continue to pay over to the general fund to pay off that note in 2029. So there is the information on the debt on where we stand right there. And again, very good interest rates. So that was uh, basically the highlights of the Urban Renewal Agency. Are there any questions you may have about that? And if you look on page nine of this section, there is the map with the yellow areas showing the defined urban renewal uh, 
district. Um, you'll see a substantial portion of it is um, basically the, the land occupied by, well, beyond that even, um, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, property and uh, much of the land surrounding that area. At one time, I think when this district was originally established, it was thought that that was going to be an area where there would be a substantial amount of urban development in Gladstone. A specific project actually was in mind. It turned out that did not come to pass, but that is still the area that uh, comprises the district. Uh, plus all the other areas in yellow that are on there as well. So uh, some of the school boundaries and uh, the area near our civic center here. Uh, the other thing that I might point out also too, as far as use of the urban renewal agency funding, we also contribute over to our audit services and our insurance cost as a whole with the city. There is a contribution there. The urban renewal agency, of course, has to go through its own audit every single year. So there is definitely a separate cost there. And um, other than that, and then we do have some money slated for contractual and professional services in case there is a review or necessary costs that um, are anticipated there. I have just a background question. What is, it, what is the insurance protecting <laughs> under the urban renewal? And this would be as a general contribution towards property liability uh, you know, just our general insurance for the city, not dealing with uh, workman's compensation because we don't have any employees within there, but for property liabilities. Okay. Are there any other questions about this portion of the budget? So I have a motion regarding the Gladstone Urban Renewal budget. Uh, two motions, really. Uh, one will, well, three motions, really. One for the, the budget itself, and then two for the tax levy for the individual portions, individual fiscal years. I move that the Budget Committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2025 in the amount of $5,227,997. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? A second. All right, it's been moved by Gura Budget Committee Chair Milch and seconded by Budget Committee Member Huckabee. Um, any discussion? All right, Haley, will you call the roll please? Councilor Huckabee? Yes. Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Yes. Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? Yes. Nina Harrington? Yes. The motion is passed. Uh, next, I have two tax levy motions. I move that the Budget Committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve property taxes for the 2023-2024 fiscal year by option one plan slash 100% from division of tax. If I get a second, I'll just ask for a brief explanation. I'll second. Okay. And if you could just tell us what that, what the option is and what that means. There are two methods of assessing an urban renewal rate. And this is the method that the city chose at the, when they originally formed it. And I believe the other one would be a specific dollar amount, um, you know, X amount dollars per thousand. But this is the option that is, uh, has been chosen and how we receive it. Okay. I believe also too, that this gives us a little more latitude as far as um, the source of funding coming in. All right. Any questions on this motion? Haley, will you call the roll, please? Councillor Huckabee? Yes. Councillor Alexander? Yes. Councillor Reichel? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Roberts? Yes. Councillor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Yes. Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? 
Yes. Nina Harrington. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. And this is the uh, tax levy motion for the second year of the uh, biennium budget. I move that the budget committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve property taxes for the 2024-2025 fiscal year by option one plan slash 100% from division of tax. A second. It's been moved by Gura Budget Chair Milch and seconded by uh, uh, Budget Committee Member Roberts. Any discussion? Now let's take a roll on that one too. Councilor Huckabee? Yes. Councilor Alexander? Yes. Councilor Reichel? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Roberts? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mayor Milch? Yes. Ron Ruggiero? Yes. Joshua Smith? Yes. Gabriella Blog? Yes. Nina, er Nina Harrington? Yes. So that motion passes as well. So we have completed all the required motions. <laughs> That's all the required business of the budget committee. What we have done is referred these budgets to the city council. The next step in the ongoing process, other than that other hearing on uh, the one portion that we had to look at, um, is, uh, is for actual adoption of the budget by the city council. That will happen prior to the June 30 deadline. And I think at our June 9th meeting, uh, is it? 12th. June 12th meeting, okay. Um, 13th, sorry. 13th, <laughs> somewhere in early June, our first, our regular meeting right in the month of June. June. Yeah, oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other items of business that we need to do uh, tonight? I have nothing further. Okay. I well, I will second that. And especially since uh, I think for all of you, this is maybe the first uh, official city committee you've been involved with. So it was a learning process, but it was one motivated by your interest in doing something good for this city. And I appreciated the questions you asked. Uh, it helped educate all of us in this process. So I think it's been a good process. It took two meetings, but I'm fine with that. And, and Jackie shared with me that staff was fine with that too. We wanna to be in there and do it right and make sure we're communicating well. And uh, you know, it never feels good and you feel like you've rail railroaded something through. Uh, we've taken the time that was required. So I appreciate that. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved by uh, Councilor Huckabee, seconded by Councilor Roberts. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned at uh, 6.55 p.m. Thank you.